Hey everyone, YouTube land, Dan here from Geekcast Radio doing another comic book haul video. So I go through my recent pickups, let you know what I bought, the reasonings for it, and this video is actually kind of special because a first thing happened to me as I got my first physical Kickstarter book in the mail today. It, it ended up working out perfectly. It was on my way to the comic book store, checked my mailbox, and there it was. And it came in this handy dandy uh, envelope. And first thing I was surprised about was that it wasn't just shoved into my mailbox and utterly destroyed. Uh, luckily, just the do not bend on it was enough. And I got to hand it to my mail people because they actually took care of it. And even though it wasn't really in anything special, it was just kind of in this thing. So uh, it was a, a, <laughs> a bold move uh, and ended up actually paying off. Um, the book I picked up or I, I got was uh, this Final Girl uh, issue number one. I think there's actually going to be f future issues by this. This is done by Nick Holm, I believe is the name. I can't remember, honestly. And there's, I could have found credentials in, in the book. And I, I, I backed this a few weeks ago, I think last month or so, and it said it would be released in October, and it hit, it is, which is kind of great, because I I have back others' Kickstarter stuff and got the digital copies of it, and often it's much more delayed than they say. Um, and I'm not a huge horror fan, but this is this is a huge like uh, love letter to classic horror stuff, especially things like zombies, of course, you know, Jason, Michael Myers, Freddy, and... I don't fully know what the story is about. I just thought the art looked really cool. I like the style of the book. The The paper has almost like an aged look to it. It's actually a really well put together uh, piece. Like the, the, the quality of the paper is quite good. You know, honestly, it's much better than most of the big two stuff we get. And I have gotten other um, Kickstarter books and they honestly aren't usually this professionally put together um, compared to, you know, where, where this is at. Um, you know, I could, if this was an image book, wouldn't really bat an eye honestly it's maybe not to super to that level but it's not that far off i love the little uh in kind of ad fake ad here in the beginning um and uh it seems like it's going to be a spoof or a takeoff of a lot of those classic horror horror tropes so uh really find the art style really great as well and it was only seven dollars uh to back this and get a physical copy of it, which is a lot cheaper than most of the other Kickstarter stuff uh, to get, and that included shipping as well. So I felt, hey, that's a it's a good deal. It looked like a great idea. I'm all about backing, you know, independent creators, self-published creators, and I actually backed a few others. And perhaps I'm the kiss kiss of death because I backed three or four other books, and they ended up not being fully funded. Well, luckily this one was one that that was fully funded, and I got the actual physical copy. So. Very cool to see. I'm looking forward to read through that. I might do a video on it. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. I also picked up some books from the, the Dollar Bin, which I love doing. And I've been in a big Daredevil mood as of late with the upcoming season three of Daredevil. And we, we got a great uh, preview of that. And I was going through the, the box and found some uh, Daredevil books, starting with Daredevil uh, issue number 192. Um, this was written by, I want to check out who is written by, uh, if I can find that or not of course they're gonna put like the credentials way back in the actual book itself um, this is Alan Burnett with art by Klaus Johnson uh, and it's on the greatest condition in the world but I, I've not read, read a lot of Daredevil stuff I read obviously some of Frank Miller's stuff Bendis and uh, the, the the relaunch by Mark Wade but stuff before that really anything before issue 200 I don't have much knowledge of so uh, this being issue 192, I thought I'd pick it up and read it. Um, and also issue 193. I also really like that cover. Uh, pretty cool cover with Daredevil holding a gigantic axe. And decent art within it as well. Um, so, and then I also picked up 194. So I, I'm always a big fan when you go into a dollar, dollar bin and you get like a good chunk of issues that are all fall in line. So uh, another, another, and these are all written. Well, this one's actually Denny O'Neill, um, but same with the artist Klaus Johnson. So very cool. I will perhaps do one of my back issues reviews. I'm going to try to read some of these and see which one I feel like is, has gives me the most to talk about. Also pretty, pretty solid cover there as well. All right, well now I'll get into this week's books. And I do try to rank these books by most least anticipated to most anticipated. I will say I'm looking forward to reading every book here. There are a few books that I'm debating about dropping, not necessarily because the quality has dropped, but I have to drop some books simply because I have too many as of, as of now. And there are new series coming out that I actually wanted to, 
jump in on. So I was just looking at stuff that perhaps I'm not as enthralled with it or just haven't been keeping up with it. And if it's been a while since I've read the last issue, maybe that's a notification that perhaps I don't need to pick it up each month. Um, but we start with Superman, with Superman number four. And uh, I don't, I, I struggle with, with this. Uh, I actually been enjoying action comics, but Superman, like every time I feel like, oh, Bendis has it, there's something here. Then like issue number three, to me just felt very flat and there wasn't as much there. Uh, I, th I, I think, I can't remember. There were some good moments here and there. Um, but I think partially too, anytime Rogar Czar is on, on the forefront of the book, it just hasn't hasn't really worked for me. Um, so, well, but I, I've liked the action comics because it's had that more personal uh, feel to it that it, I think Bendis excels at the most. Um, but you know, I get I get you want to have the bombastic action when it comes to Superman. So, well, I'll, I keep going with it though because I just feel like it, it, it can get there. It can like I feel like. Bendis has the ability to make a great Superman book. It just hasn't happened yet, even though this is probably his five, not 20 so or issue, if you include Man of Steel of writing Superman. Um, but I don't know. that's why it's really on the bubble. And also it's the foil cover, which which is fine. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of, of the necessary bringing back the foil covers. DC seems right now to be like, let's do everything we did in the 90s again uh, with the foil covers. Also, we're having all these edgy characters. Nightwing now is like Jason Todd. Uh, things are dark and depressing once again with a lot of their books. Uh, I don't know why that is. It seems like everything that kind of happened in Rebirth is, coming, is now going back to what it was before. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what I felt like they, there was a course adjustment or especially when you look at like Heroes in Crisis and Doomsday Clock, I feel like they're on two separate paths in, in a way. And maybe because Doomsday Clock was delayed that DC is like, okay, Jeff Johns had this plan of where he wanted to go, but we're going to go this other direction. And perhaps it was because of the success of books like uh, Batman White Knight or, or Mr. Miracle. They're like, oh, these books that are more dark and adult, that's what people want. So let's go down that route. But I don't know if that's necessarily why those books were successful. I think they were successful because they were good books. Um, so when you try to then repeat that, it becomes a little bit more artificial. We'll see. I think there's still great DC books out there, don't get me wrong. Um, but it just seems like DC seems to be in this weird transition period. Uh, well, I don't know where exactly they're going with some stuff. And I haven't, I didn't love Heroes in Crisis. And the more I think about it, the, the, the least, the less I like it. Uh, so I don't know. That's just why I have that interpretation. Anyways, that was Superman 4. Kind of went off the rails there for a little bit. But also coming out this week is Exiles number 9. And I'm a huge Exiles fan. I've been enjoying this book, but I realize I'm a little far behind. Uh, Soldier yeah, Ahmed, he packs in a full issue. So these are a little bit, usually a little longer of a read. So uh, as I am in trying to crunch, in crunch time right now with a lot of things, it's hard to find time to complete this series. So I'm still sticking with this book, but the more I'm looking at it, I'm like, I haven't think, I can't remember the full, last full issue that I read. It's actually kind of great timing though, uh, with this being Arabian Nights and the trailer for Aladdin coming out yesterday. Uh, I don't think that was Disney signature happening, but hey, you never know. Uh, so we'll see. And this is, I think, artist Javier Rodriguez is coming back to the book, which is great because I think he really brings something special. Uh, t and I think uh, he's one of those artists that I think needs to be, uh, to me, a much bigger name than he is. Uh, perhaps his aesthetic is a little bit different than typical superhero stories, but I just find his panel design and he's very creative with the things that he does. All right. Uh, also coming out this week from DC uh, is Catwoman, an another foil cover. Don't really love that, honestly, to be. Uh, but this is another book I struggle with. Um, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I'm concerned knowing that Joel Jones is going to be uh, leaving our duties. And I, I'm not sure who's, who's going to be taking him up full, full after that. I do see in this that there are other people on art outside of just Joel Jones. I don't know if that's because there's flashbacks or, or what have you. Um, and I love Joel Jones a lot as a creator. Her, you know, her, uh, series where for Dark Horse was fantastic, but this feels like a book where she's only, she feels like she's being directed through editorial and you're not really seeing what she can do uh, fully. Uh, but that, that, you know, she's still learning. This is the first really big DC title, so that it could get better as it goes. Maybe if she does writing duty solely, it, we'll see an improvement, but yeah, it's just, uh, just as a book that I'm not super excited about as much as I thought I would be, uh, I might be perhaps dropping that. Those are, 
three of the books I'm deb debating about letting go is other new series are coming out that I'm much more excited about, like Bitterroot. Uh, I'm super excited about which comes out next month. Those, to me, I'm like, I, I don't know if, if I stop reading those, would I really mind that much? And the answer is probably not. Um, these other books are books I've really enjoyed so far, so I'm obviously excited that they're coming out, um, starting with Captain America, with Captain America number four. A uh, little fantastic cover there by Alex Ross. I know Alex Ross covers are a dime a dozen, but since there's so many of them, but I've been enjoying what he's been doing with Captain America. His style just fits the character so well. Uh, I've, I've been enjoying this book. I will say if there's one complaint with uh, Tony Nese's coaches, Captain America, is that it has been a little bit repetitive and perhaps a little thin. Uh, there's a lot going on, or uh, there's a lot of ideas here, but I think when it comes to Captain America characterization, there's been bits and pieces, but it feels like a little bit uh, in, in status and in, 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 in where we haven't really seen much development issue to issue with him. Um, I like Linus Francis use art. I will say there it, it, it does, there's a stoicism to it that fits the character of, of Captain America, but when it gets into the more action-oriented scenes, it doesn't necessarily have that energy, especially compared to like Chris Samney, who's been doing this before, but obviously a very different style. I think it fits the story well, um, but it does, again, keep that, um, keep it, the, the pace of the book seem rather deliberate. Um, so, but I really love just what it's done, making uh, Secret Empire actually a much more fulfilling story after it ended by utilizing what happened there as this, you know, pretty straightforward allegory for today's world, but it fits without feeling forced. So, and then uh, I feel like it's, to me, building into something, uh, what that is, I'm not fully sure, uh, but also Captain America is my favorite character, so perhaps I'm able, I'm willing to give it a little bit more rope than others, but I've been enjoying this. Uh, I, I guess perhaps he was reading Donnie Easy Coach's previous work, he tends to put a lot on the page, <laughs> perhaps too much control, and this maybe he's kind of dialed it back a little bit too much. Maybe if you could find a good middle ground, it would be even better. But I felt like the what, what it's going for on a, on a thematic level feels very akin to what uh, Brubaker was doing, um, but perhaps not as, I think, complete as that. It's not as good as Winter Soldier's run or Brubaker's run, but that's that's hard to compare because to me that's the best, one of the best Marvel runs period in the last 20 years, um, where that's not quite, quite, quite there yet. Uh, a book that I've been going up and down on, but I've been enjoying more and more with each passing issue is Avengers, with, and now Avengers number nine is coming out this week. Avengers has been a book that started off okay, and it was just kind of odd. I felt like Jason Aaron was just kind of testing the waters, no pun intended, uh, trying to get his, his, his characters in place. Um, and last issue to me was one of the, the best <laughs> issues, even though it was really just them going to their base uh, and, and hanging out. But it felt like the Avengers being the Avengers again, and how do you event make the Avengers the Avengers again? You bring back Namor, that's a good way to do it. Uh, and this is also uh, drawn by David Marquez, who to me f fits Jason Aaron's style, uh, honestly a lot better than um, Ed McGinnis. I like Ed McGinnis, no doubt, but he, he his car more cartoony style doesn't really, to me, fit with have an aesthetic that makes sense for Jason Aaron books. Uh, it, there were good elements of it, it had a great scale, especially when we, when we had the Celestials, but when it got, gets into the more serious moments, it doesn't necessarily have that emotional resonance that you really want. Um, it's kind of also funny when you look at the Avengers and Justice League with DC and how they've been mirroring each other. When they first started, both have these gigantic space gods dealing with the Celestials or the gods in DC. Uh, now DC is having the John Earth with Atlantis at the forefront and Aquaman. And now Marvel has Namor uh, at the forefront of the Avengers title. So I don't know if uh, Jason Aaron and Scott Snyder have a weird bet going on, if this is like a deep impact Armageddon situation, but it is really weird where these books have been mirroring each other so much since they came out, since we when Scott Snyder and Jason Aaron have taken them over. Um, I, I think this was probably a little bit more planned because I know we, we know Aquaman's coming out in a few weeks, so we can we can guess that DC is going to make Aquaman a big deal in comics. So perhaps Marvel saw that it's like we need to get Namor back in a big way, and that's what this is doing. And I'm excited to see what Jason Aaron would do with a character like Namor. I don't know if he's ever written him in the past, but I think he would be the, considering how uh, complete his characters tend to be and well-rounded. It should fit a, key, a character like Namor quite well. 
All right. Uh, next book on the list is Amazing Spider-Man with Amazing Spider-Man number seven. Uh, this is by Nick Spencer and art by Roberto Ramos. And this has just been fun, honestly. Uh, last issue was just Spider-Man and Boomerang going to this bar to, for Spider-Man trivia night. Uh, and it it's dumb, but in a good way. And it's 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 got that bad humor that works for Spider-Man. Spider-Man shouldn't have jokes that work all the time. They should have they should be bad dad jokes through the lens of a superhero, and that actually fits Nick Spencer perfectly. Um, and Herberto Ramos, I think style fits this well. I, I do miss Nick Spencer, but it was a good editorial choice to put Nick Spencer or to put Ramos and Ryan Otley together because having a similar cartoony look, it doesn't make it that dramatic Dramatic when you go from one to the next. And if you like one, you're probably gonna like the other. Uh, and I like Roberto Ramos a lot. I know some people don't like his stuff because his, his work tends to be really stylized. The anatomy doesn't look realistic, but but I'm okay with that. I, 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 like, I like looking at art that looks different and artists that are trying things that are new and are, you can, and don't feel like a generic house style and that's typically the case with Roberto Ramos. Our next book on the list, it comes from us, from, from Dark Horse and the Black Hammer universe. It's Quantum Age number three. I've been enjoying this series a lot. Uh, Jeff Lemire is just the best writer in comics right now. Uh, the Black Hammer, Hammer universe t t continues to be fantastic. This to me isn't as good as the Dr. Star book. It wasn't, it's not, was not nearly as emotionally impactful, but it's still quite good. Uh, and the, what I love about these series as well is that if, even if you've never read a Black Hammer book before, you can usually pick them up and really understand them and get everything you need. But if you have read them, you tend to, it tends to add more to the storyline and at least even make past Black Hammer books more complete. Um, so if this is you know, a take of like the, the future Justice League, but in the Black Hammer universe where everything has kind of gone to hell and now they're trying to fix it. Uh, this is the next book that I actually re I've had read this already, but uh, it's been fantastic, and I'm surprised there's just not been more love for Farmhand because it's been such a great book. Uh, but Rob Guillory, the creator, co-creator of Chew, is now his own creator, own series where he's writing and drawing and doing pretty much everything, and it's been great. And I also think this is should win the award for best all-around book because I'm just surprised by how much it's able to accomplish. It's funny, uh, it's heartfelt, it's horrific. Uh, it, it's able to do pretty much everything. It's dramatic. Each issue feels dense, but never feeling like you're overwhelmed with information. It's just, I'm just really impressed with it. And it's a book that each issue feels complete, but you can tell as a whole, it would even read better altogether. And uh, to Rob Guillory, Guillory's credit, he has this checklist on the back. And so far, so good. He's met me at each uh, date. Um, November 7th is issue number five in there. We don't have a date after that, so I don't know. I doubt that's the end of this book because this does not seem like a series that's anywhere near endings because they're really just building up this world, uh, the characters, the family. There's a lot going on, so it would be impossible for it to end. Um, I guess it'll do that classic image break where you have five issues or so and then take a few months off. Uh, I just hope it's not too much, So, but it's been quite good. Uh, another book coming out this week from Marvel is Venom with Venom number seven, which has probably been my Venom's, uh, has been Marvel's probably most popular book since its debut uh, with Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. However, Ryan Stegman's not drawing this issue, which uh, art by, uh, um, I try to get the name, uh, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Coelho, who is honestly someone I'm not super familiar with. Um, right, I, so I my only question is, how will this book, book f fare with a, a new artist? And I kind of already know because I've already, I've already read this and I actually have a review of it on uh, uh, Comic Crusaders that you can check out. Um, but I will say one of my biggest complaints with the Venom series, even though I've really enjoyed it, was that Eddie Brock as a character has felt left out. Uh, it felt like he was just a passenger on this story. And as someone who's not a huge Eddie Brock or Venom fan, I needed more to really feel like the story was complete. Uh, and with this issue, it seems like that is what we're getting now. Uh, where it's less about the secret history of the symbiotes and more about who is Eddie Brock and what what brought him to this time and place. Uh, not a lot is given away, but there are seems you can see that okay, it does seem like with this series, uh, Donny Cage is in, in for the long haul. All right, the final two books that are coming out this week. I just love this series, uh, Hot Lunch Special number three. Also fantastic cover. That's great. Uh, this is. 
a crime story dealing with a family. I always compare it to like Fargo or the Coen brothers. It seemed like the most obvious comparison. It's a lot of great storytelling um, where you have this family that was uh, owns this diner, but there's a lot of mob activity beyond it. And because of that, uh, a lot of horrific things have happened. They're dealing with the ramifications of the first issue with the, where a family member was dead. Um, and that's been carrying through. Um, and it seems like based upon the end of last issue, a lot of the secret history of the family might be revealed um, as the, the, we, the others are learning about what's really been going on. Because it seems like only certain people in the family knew what was, the knew the family's history and connections to some of these CD characters. But there's just a lot of fantastic characters in this. Everyone, uh, ev everyone being, uh, well developed and like and Cone Brothers is a, a good uh, comparison because like Cone Brother characters it tends to be some sort of quirk or item that makes them stand out and that's the case here with Hotline Special so uh, Aftershock has a lot of good books out but to me as of right now unquestionably Hotline Special is probably their best title and last uh, speaking of best titles this to me is Marvel's best book and that's not even close with Immortal Hulk number seven man this has been <laughs> one of the best Hulk titles I've read in a long time. Not a huge Hulk fan. Uh, I went into this series thinking it was going to be this horror type of book, but it's really developed into something much more. Uh, now we're getting Hulk versus the Avengers, a classic part of Marvel history, but this is a very different Hulk, uh, which I think makes this meaning a, a, mean a lot more than you would in a traditional Hulk book, because this is a Hulk that's a little bit more sadistic. This is a Hulk that has not... Uh, you're not really sure where he's coming from. He doesn't really have a heroic side that we've seen, and there's a lot of been going on in the background. Um, there were a lot of, this started off as like an episodic storytelling with each issue kind of being its own thing, but the last few issues, it's been tying everything together. I did kind of wish that it would stick with the episodic nature for a longer period of time, but uh, I'm glad it's still been really good. So it's also come, this is also on issue seven. I feel like it just started a month or two ago, uh, but I can't complain. It looks like Joe Bennett is back doing art as well where he was off last issue. So highly advised if you're looking for one Marvel title to read, in, to my opinion, Immortal Hulk's the book. Uh, it's just impressive what they're doing with this series. Uh, Al Ewing, you know, he, he had a lot of great stuff on Marvel. I felt like never there was never that one thing that really pushed him to the next level. I feel like Immortal Hulk is that. I think it'll be maybe looking at Iser's next year. I think this will probably be Marvel's a best chance of winning an Eisner. Uh, but, I don't know, another great Alex Ross cover as well. All right. Well, that's the end of this week's haul. Uh, let me know what you've been picking up, what you've been enjoying. I do have really exciting news as also starting within a day or so, a new video series I'm beginning called Starting Points, where I'm gonna look at uh, a look ahead to the week's comics coming out and try to pick starting points. Because I know when you walk into a comic book store, sometimes the hardest thing is to know what to read. And I do comic book calls to show you what I'm reading, but it's good to know ahead of time. So the starting points video I'll be going through, ongoing series starting new arcs, new series debuting, trade paperbacks coming out as well. Um, highlighting those uh, to kind of give you a heads up before you head to the comic book store of perhaps what you should be picking up. So uh, I already recorded that video. I'm just editing it now. I'm actually trying to do real editing, not just these point and shoot type of thing, trying to make it a little bit more polished. We'll see how it goes. It's taking a lot more time uh, as I'm new to this game. But all right. Anyways, just remember comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one. Until next time, thanks for watching.